Hello there! In this tutorial, we're going to be covering track matting in After Effects. So track matting is a little bit different between 2023 and previous versions of After Effects in terms of how you actually do it. So I'm going to be explaining this twice. First for older versions of After Effects, and then the second time for 2023 and beyond. If possible, I highly recommend that you upgrade to After Effects 2023 and newer, but it's also okay if you can't. So what is track matting? If you've ever used an art program, you might be familiar with the concept of clipping. And this is basically the same thing as clipping. So what this does is that it makes it so that one layer can only appear in the same space as another layer. So to show you what this actually looks like, I'm going to start by making a shape layer. And then I'm going to make a rectangle. I'll make our rectangle a little bigger, add a fill to it so we can see what's going on. And I will just change the color to let's say a white. So I've already imported a sample image that we can work with, so I'm going to drag the sample image in. And let's say I want this image to only appear within the inside of this rectangle. I don't want it to appear outside of it. What I can do is now drag my image below this rectangle, and if we look to the right, there is this section called Track Mat right here. And here we have a tab that we can open up. So what we're going to select here is Alpha Mat on Shape Layer 1. So I'm going to click this. And what it does is that it automatically makes the above layer transparent and it links the two layers together. So now this layer only appears in the space where the rectangle was and our rectangle is gone. Alternatively, there's also inverse track matting. So let's say I wanted this character to appear everywhere except for where this rectangle is. I can instead go to track mat and go to alpha inverted map. And now our character appears everywhere else. And we can also move this rectangle around and the relationship will stay the same. So there are a couple flaws in the older versions of After Effects in terms of how track matting is done. So in the older versions of After Effects, the layer order matters. If I decide to move this, this character layer above the shape layer, suddenly our track mat relationship is gone. So if I change this to an alpha mat, there are often times where I have a character inside a shape, but I want this shape to actually be visible as well. But if I make our current layer visible, you'll see that it covers our character. And I can't change the order of this either because then the track map relationship is lost. So what happens is that you'll have to copy paste the layer twice. So I will have one version of our rectangle visible and I have to put this below our image. And then I have another layer on top that maintains the track map relationship. If I then decide that I want to animate this rectangle, maybe have it like slide in from the left, I'm going to have to copy paste the keyframes for both of my rectangles again in order to keep this consistent. Another slight flaw is that you can only have one layer track matted to another layer. So let's say I have a second version of my image and I also want this to be track matted to the same shape layer. I actually can't do this. You can't make, you can't make that relationship. So I have to again copy paste my shape layer and then track mat my new image to the shape layer again. And now we can have two copies of an image within the same rectangle. And you can see that now the number of times you have to copy paste this shape layer has already increased quite a lot. And this can get a little bit tedious. So all of these problems are actually fixed in After Effects 2023, which is why I really recommend you upgrade if you can. So next I'm going to move over to After Effects 2023 and show you how track matting is done here. So I'm going to start by making a shape layer again. And then I'm going to add a rectangle, add a fill. Oops, did I not add a fill? Add a fill, make it white, and then make our rectangle a little bit bigger again. So I'm going to drag our same image in, and let's say we want to do the same type of track mat connection. I want this character to appear just within this rectangle. So if we go to our track mat section here in 2023, you'll see that it looks a little bit different. Now we have a track mat pick with the Naruto symbol, and then we can also select a layer directly from the list here. So I'm going to drag our Naruto symbol from our image to our shape layer to track mat it together. Just like before, it'll automatically make the top layer invisible, but now I can change the order of these layers, and it will maintain this relationship. Even if I add another solid in or any other layers in, the track mat relationship is maintained. I can also make the shape visible now, and it can sit underneath the character, and I don't have to copy paste anything again. You can also track my multiple objects to each other, so I can drag a second image in. I can also just grab the pick whip and track mat it to the same shape layer again. And the relationship is maintained. If I'd like to do an inverse track mat on either of these layers, what I can also do is just go to this little half circle button here and click invert map. And it will make it so that our image appears everywhere except for the layer where that is being track matted to. 
So next I'm going to delete all of these and do a quick demo of some of the common ways that I use track mats in my own videos. So the first thing I often use track mats for is making borders on videos actually. So I'm going to go to new solid and make a white solid because I'm going to make a white border. And then I'm going to add a shape layer and add a rectangle here. And I'll make the rectangle path bigger. And then I'm going to grab the pick whip on the white solid and drag it to our shape layer. And then I'm going to, oh, I forgot to add a fill, like a fill. And then I'm going to hit the inverse track map button. And now with this, we have a border on the video and I can adjust the roundness of these corners and so on. I often use track mats and shape layers for this. So that way you can maintain an equal size on each side of the video. And you can also add these curvy borders as well, which is pretty fun. Or I can do this with any sort of shape. I can do this with like a circle or a star or anything else as well. Another way I often see track mats being used is for transitioning text in. So if I have like this example text here, actually I'll just name this example. And then let's say I want to have this text slide in from the middle of the screen. So let's say I will just keyframe this quickly and have a little sliding animation. So now our text slides in, but let's say instead of having it slide from the left to the right, I want it to just appear straight from the middle. What I can do is now create a solid and then I can track mat our text to this solid so that it only starts appearing when it's on this right half of the screen. So I can track mat this here. And now we have this sort of transition in for the text. I also often use track mats to basically put characters inside of certain shapes. So for example, I think a screen split type of thing is something that people often do. So I will make a white solid and let's say I want to split the screen into three. I'm going to make the scale about 33.3. .3. Actually, I will make the other axis 33.3. .3. And then I will make three copies of this. Move one to the left, move the other one to the right, and I will change the colors to make this a little easier to see. And now I'm going to add three copies of my character image and then track that each of them to one of different solids. Now we have this sort of screen split here like this. And I can show off different parts of my character. And I can do more things as well, like animate them like sliding in. have this kind of sliding animation like so. So these are some common ways that I use track mats. Obviously the ways that you can use this are quite literally infinite. So I highly recommend you try a bunch of things out in your own time and start implementing track mats into your own videos. That'll be all for this lesson and thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any specific topics you'd like me to cover in a future video. Goodbye!